<clears throat> Hello uh, everyone, <laughs> my name is Sam and if you are new around here, I used to cover true crime videos and it's been about five months since I have been on the internet or at least on YouTube and I've had a lot of comments and a lot of messages as to why. You're probably wondering why I'm standing in my kitchen. Well, I <laughs> I feel like I'm really gonna need a wine to tell this story because it's been a long five months. So, um, my own frame, yes. <laughs> so if you are here wondering what happened to me, thank you for joining. This is obviously a very off the cuff video. You know what's funny? I used to be very anal or attentive about how my videos looked, how I looked, I would spend like, in an hour and a half doing a full face of makeup and for what you know um yeah it, it has been a long five months since i left the internet <clears throat> so i'm here to tell you why i quit youtube and why i quit doing true crime videos uh i haven't even warmed my voice up which is something i usually I, I used to always do before I filmed a video was warm my voice up. I do like 15 minutes of voice exercises, do my whole, you know, so makeup routine. I wanted to look perfect and I thought if I look perfect for the internet, nobody can pick on me. Nobody can bully me. But that's not true. <laughs> I definitely got bullied online. But anyway, that is not why I left the internet. Although it kind of, you know, didn't help. Um... Let's let's sit down together and have a bit of a banter. If you have any interest in why I left YouTube, then stick around. Ching ching. Is it ching ching or chin chin? Hmm. <sighs> Welcome to my new background. By the way, that's, uh, that's the automatic cat feeder. Anyway, um, my new background is my new apartment, which I bought. We'll get into that shortly. Um, I'm using my old microphone as well. So if the sound quality isn't amazing, which I can only assume it's not because this room's quite empty, then I do apologize. Hopefully it's still bearable. Give me one second. I'm going to grab my laptop so I can see what's going on because I'm not wearing contacts and I can't see anything. First of all, if you are just here for the true crime videos, I did record one about five or six months ago that I never uploaded. I am going to be pushing that video up quite shortly, probably a day or so after this. Uh, it's a missing person case from Melbourne. I recorded it so long ago it's gone from my memory. Um, but that is basically edited and ready to go, so watch out for that. Uh, having said that, I don't know if I'm going to return to doing true crime. Um, again, this video is going to be a lot about why I left YouTube, so if you have no interest in my life, I guess don't stick around. So basically, a lot of you will know that I was engaged to, to be married. I'm stuttering already, perfect. <laughs> engaged to be married. Um, now I'm not, so that's not so good. Uh, I, back in July, actually broke up with my uh, ex-fiance. I had been unhappy for a while. And I mean, for one, when you're unhappy and then you're re researching unhappy, oh my gosh, I can hear the echoing in this video. I'm so sorry if there are future videos, which I'm hoping there are, I will sort that out. Oh, it's, it's, it's annoying. Anyway, moving on, just a pass that. Um, yeah, I broke it off. I hadn't been happy. I felt like I was living Groundhog Day, basically. Obviously, I don't want to go into too much detail in this video. video. I had been thinking about the breakup for a long time. The thing is, we've been together for nine years, and when you've been with somebody for that amount of time, you want to make it work. 
the, and the, here's the thing. There was no arguing. There was no fighting. There was no... There was no bitter end. It was simply that I felt like we were more just like friends. And in the end, we were living like housemates. Okay, there's going to be a lot of interjections from editing me. But basically, at this point, I go into another story, just trying to explain to you that I was living each day like like Groundhog Day, but I wasn't willing to change it because the life I was living was easy. It would have been easy to go on being with my ex, easy to live the life I was living. Uh, it was hard to leave. I mean, obviously, everyone, you know, it's always hard to leave a relationship, but this story I go into now basically explains the moment I realized I had to end things. Okay. Um, funnily enough, a lot of you guys might or might not know, or may not know, I'm a flight attendant. Back in late June, early July, so I'm a flight attendant regionally, regionally. Oh, I really wish I'd wrote a script for this. <laughs> Here in Western Australia, um, which means, hey baby, which means I usually go on quite short trips. It will be just there and back. Generally not, not many overnights, if any. Back in June, late June, I was on reserve on a Saturday. My reserve was coming to an end and I got a call from operations, uh, flight operations, and they called me out for a trip. <laughs> it was initially an overnight trip of, I think, two nights. Uh, I had two hours to pack my bags. Didn't even, didn't even know where my suitcase was. Uh, I, I had literally a panic attack. <laughs> As in two hours to pack my bag and be at an airport that I had never driven to because we were flying up in a small aircraft and this small aircraft was going from a different airport. And not to mention the fact because I fly regional, I don't ever have an overnight suitcase ready to go on reserve, which is why I panicked when I had two hours to be at the airport, which is standard for a, re a reserve, but our flights are usually just there and back, and I've got that suitcase packed, but not an overnight one, let alone for multiple nights. Okay. And I uh, packed my bags and off I went, got on a little 10-seater aircraft up to Kalgoorlie, and got there, found out the trip was actually one week. Now, if you're a flight attendant and you're going away for a week, you pack for a week. I packed for barely two days and I'm someone that likes to organize, organize my life. I like things to be organized. <laughs> um, I wasn't organized, but um, long story short, this trip kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things. I had a chance to A, be away from home and from my ex-fiance for a week, a chance to think about my life, think about if I was happy, which, I wasn't and I had a chance to um, this trip was by the way up north up north of Western Australia so a uh, room a uh, Kananara it was it was an amazing trip great crew I had honestly it was what I came to realize on the trip the happiest I had been in like a year at least and that shouldn't be the case it shouldn't be I shouldn't have felt happier on that trip away from my partner then uh, I was at home. And as the trip came to an end and all the rest of the crew were so happy to be going back to their partners, I wasn't, which is a bad sign, <laughs> obviously. And I spoke to my crew a lot about this as well, about how I was feeling. And the thing was, as I said, we were engaged to be married and I wasn't excited about that idea. Uh, and if I'm with somebody that I'm meant to be marrying and I don't even feel excited for that, I personally don't see the point of continuing the relationship, even if it's been nine years. So I broke it off. That sounds very like, why didn't you work on it? Why didn't you try to make it work, do something? I had been trying to make it work for all of this year. And I, when you know something is over, you, you know. If you've ever been in a relationship and you've ended it, if you're the one that's ended it, you know. And I knew. I didn't need to uh, 
there was nothing else I could have done, in, in my opinion. And as you can imagine as well, ending a nine-year relationship is terrifying. Which is why I put it off for so long. I mean, you've got the fact that we lived together. The fact I was either going to have to find uh, a new rental or pay double the rent if he moved out or find housemates. And at my age, honestly, a lot of my, my friends are married or have kids or, or both. And on top of all of that, the thought of starting again, the thought of dating again made me want to throw up <laughs> really I mean again nine years I didn't even know I mean I don't I still don't know how to date how do you uh, when I started dating my ex tinder didn't exist <laughs> and then it's I've gotten to the age where anyone that is now single has either already been married already has kids which is fine and it's it's everyone's got baggage by this point so it, it's, it's a whole different ball game dating now than it was nine years ago, which to me is, I mean, that's, that's terrifying. To start again after that long is fucking terrifying, <laughs> which is why I put it off. And the way in which I had to break up was simply to sit down and say that I wasn't happy and that was that. And then there was the next challenge I had to move on to was figuring out in a rental crisis where I was going to live, which is why I bought this apartment. Just for context with the rental crisis, I don't know what's happening in the rest of, honestly, Australia, let alone the world, but right now here in Perth, you are paying a lot for a rental. You're having dozens of people showing up to home opens, and then the people applying for those houses are offering more money than the place is even worth. So you're competing with people that can afford to pay more, not to mention the fact that the rentals themselves are already right now incredibly overpriced. So for me to afford a rental living by myself or even with somebody, if I could find somebody, would have been a very large financial burden. Okay. <laughs> now I hadn't been planning to buy, however, I had been saving up for a wedding, so luckily I had a few dollars saved and really on a whim I bought a place. I didn't look around too much and I didn't do much research and and I don't recommend anyone ever buys a place on a whim. Do your research. It is so stressful. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting a bit ahead of the story, which hopefully isn't dragging on forever. But it probably is, so apologies. Anyway, I broke up with my ex and then I had to tell my parents. <laughs> that also stressed me out because they, they loved my ex like a son. We've been together for that long, but he was family. I waited a week to tell my parents. From, I think, a Friday night I broke up with my ex to a Wednesday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, a week, five days. Um, it was... Whew, stressful. That was a Wednesday, I told my parents. The Thursday, the next day, I woke up with a headache. The headache turned into a migraine. The migraine progressed to nausea. My body was aching. I was, I think I had chills. I, I couldn't eat. I was like vomiting. I, I couldn't keep a thing down. So I called sick on the Friday. By the Saturday, I called, I've been to the doctor I think twice, maybe on Friday and then again on Saturday. By the Sunday, I had checked myself into hospital. I, uh, I was so sick. This just sounds like it was a migraine when I explain it, but it was beyond that. Like I couldn't even get out of bed to shower. I couldn't eat. I couldn't keep food down. I felt like I was dying. Like I genuinely felt like I was dying. If I went into the hospital and they told me I was dying, I genuinely thought in my head that I would be relieved because I would get some peace from the migraine that wouldn't go away and the nausea that wouldn't stop and just, I was in hell. <laughs> I was literally in hell. And of course they ran some tests and they put me on some sort of drip. They basically found nothing, so that was great. I went home, I went in whatever day it was and they sent me home that night. 
next day I came back to the emergency department because I was like equally as sick if not worse the next day and the next day I had developed this rash on my torso so I, I showed you know the nurses the rash and they said it looked like the shingles <laughs> now I hadn't I'd heard of the shingles but I didn't know what the shingles was uh, the shingles apparently is like a if you've had the chicken pox it sort of lives with in you in your spine apparently forever and the shingles can come up in times of extreme stress uh, or if you've got low immunity and I guess that the stress had just gone that bad that I got the shingles <laughs> so yeah so, so I was in the emergency department on the Monday my ex actually brought me in and I was there till about four in the morning went home basically the next day I was in almost overnight I did like MRIs and stuff because I still had a migraine if, if, if you've ever had a migraine which funnily enough I never had had a migraine up until that point <laughs> if you've never had a migraine um that's probably the worst pain or the worst experience of my entire life. I genuinely have so much empathy now for migraine sufferers. My God, I am so sorry to any of you that suffer from migraines on the constant. So all in all, this migraine lasted just over a week, I believe. And of course, I had the shingles. Uh, so I couldn't go to work as a flight attendant because... I believe the shingles can be contagious if you haven't had the chicken pox or for pregnant women it can be quite dangerous for the elderly I'm not too sure but anyway the doctor said I couldn't go back to work all in all I had about two weeks off work which kind of killed me because not only was I stressed about a the breakup and B didn't know where I was going to live at this point because I was still living with my ex which you know in the beginning stages wasn't easy but now I was having to stay home in bed for two weeks so I finally got better took a while but yeah it was the sickest I had ever been my god <sighs> I genuinely wouldn't wish the shingles upon anyone I don't feel like I really explained what the shingles was properly but I'll put on screen a little description but basically it starts off as a rash which can be I believe across your torso or your butt or your face and then you can get a, a really a variety of symptoms it's most common in over 50 or 60 year olds I believe but they can occasionally happen with younger people and I just got really lucky <laughs> warning I'm about to put a photo of the shingles rash on the screen it's not a photo of my shingles I do have that but I'm not gonna share it um, but basically it starts off as like a red rash and it bubbles up and then scabs over and is itchy <laughs> and the thing is if you itch it it's very painful like very painful <laughs> as I said I would not wish the shingles upon my worst enemy and I think it's it's funny how stress presents itself um, as physical symptoms I mean people can have heart attacks and die from stress which is terrifying but I guess this is just how my body presented stress if you'd asked me if I was really 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 stressed before I got the shingles I probably would have said well I'm stressed but I'm okay well, obviously my body reacted to the situation I was in so moving forward I got better and then I had to start looking for a place to live and then the nightmare of finding uh a place began <laughs> I mean I can definitely run you through the whole process of buying a place by myself as a single person in another video maybe on, on another channel <laughs> if you like because obviously this channel is for true crime not for story times <laughs> basically I ended up buying a one by one apartment and now I live alone and I live alone for the first time in my life and it hasn't been super easy at all. I've definitely struggled. I'm lucky I've had some really good friends helping me along the way. Like, I'm really lucky. And me and my ex actually have become good friends. 
Uh, we still see each other. We still hang out. We still catch up. Uh, so I'm really grateful for that. My parents have been immensely helpful. But yeah, the process of buying a, a house is stressful. To be honest with you, I was very reliant on my ex. I hadn't, even though I am now 32 years old, I relied on him for a lot of things and I wasn't a super independent person. So buying a house, one of the biggest, most stressful things you'll ever do in your life, doing that alone, even though I wasn't alone, but you know, alone, was really bad. <laughs> I'll be honest, I drank a lot of wine the last couple of months. It, and it was a process that I didn't really understand because that's something I hadn't looked into. And I guess just even the fact that I was spending what was meant to be my wedding and honeymoon money on buying a place to live by myself kind of depressed. Oh, I said depressed. Didn't depress me, but it upset me for a long time. I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie and say I, I'm now happy because, well, no, I am. I'm happy. But it's, it's, it's been an adjustment period. And the funny thing is, and I don't know if anybody else can relate, I feel like the first six months of this year went like pretty fast. Like I don't think I even remember like, like January to June. Honestly, like it's a blur. I remember bits and pieces, but that's about it. But then from July to September, so like that three month period, oh my God, it felt like about a year. Like it was just, my, my anxiety was right up here. Like I was having a very, very bad time of it, as you can imagine. I looked at this apartment back in early July, mid July maybe. And I moved in two weeks ago and I'm finally starting to settle in, get a routine going or a routine like down pat. All in all, being single again for the first time in a long time, living by myself, having to do things for myself, like as I said, my ex did a lot for me. This feels like the first time I've had to actually be an adult in my life, which is scary. Uh, I can only really talk about it now without breaking down because it's been a couple of months. And now I feel like I am becoming somewhat of a independent adult. So that really has been my last few months. I broke up with my fiance of nine years. I checked into the emergency department twice, got the shingles, had a few weeks off work and spontaneously bought a house or an apartment. And now I'm single for the first time in nine years and I live by myself. <laughs> it's a far cry from my life a few months ago. And if you had told me, I don't know, at the start of this year, this is how my year would pan out, I don't think I would have believed you. Because I don't think I would have had the courage back then to make the right decisions for me. Not saying I'm now really good at doing that, but I'm definitely getting better, even though it's bloody scary. And so I do want to discuss a little bit as to why I stopped making true crime videos, videos in general, but obviously I make true crime videos, and why I'm not sure if I'm going to be returning to making videos. Of course, firstly, as I said, I live alone. My life's completely different now. And I'm not sure if researching true crime cases as a single woman living alone is the best idea. To be honest with you, the true crime community is not what it used to be. I don't really want to say too much because there are some amazing true crime creators out there. And then there's people that discuss true crime for views, money, clout, I hate that word. Yeah, it's just, it's not what it used to be and it's not necessarily a community I want to be a part of anymore. It just sort of shits me when 
a case happens and every Tom, Dick and Harry jumps on and makes a video within 24 hours of a case breaking, you know? Uh, does that mean I'll never make a true crime video again? No, but I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I love making videos and I love YouTube. I made my first YouTube video back in 2010. I've been kind of consistently making videos since about 2015. So I love making videos. And I still want to make videos for you. So what I think I'm going to do, pretty much after I put this video out and my last or potentially last true crime video, is start another channel where I can put up videos that are more relaxed maybe videos about being a flight attendant about about living alone about being single about my life if you want to see it if you don't then thanks for being here it's been a journey it's been a good few years on this channel and i don't really know what the future holds i wish i did <laughs> but at this stage in my life i just have I have no idea what I'm planning to do. I don't know where I'm gonna end up. I don't I don't know anything, <laughs> let alone what my next video is gonna be. But I think I'm gonna make a couple of relaxed vlogs, uh, days in my life, flight attendant life. I don't know, tell me what you wanna see. <laughs> I wanna make videos just for the sake of making them for fun. Oh, that's my phone for creativity's sake yeah <laughs> if you want to join me i'll leave a link down below um for the new channel if not again thank you for being here anyway the sun is going down as you can see and i think i'm going to wrap this video up here hopefully it all made sense hopefully this gave some clarification as to where i've been and why i've been away thank you if you made it this far if you did make it to the end of the video, leave some purple hearts down below or just let me know how you've been. How's your 2021 been? Because mine's been rubbish. <laughs> Again, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here. As I always say, stay vigilant and stay safe. And I will see you soon. And I'll wait, watch out for that... Um, last video i'm going to put up by the way that will be coming in a day or so bye guys